Hey Zen fam. So yeah, I'm still stuck with the headset. Bought a new dongle for the mic, but it's still not working. That's why I've not been around. I was waiting for the new dongle to arrive, but looks like we're still stuck with this malarkey. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get in to the uh, subject at hand in this very video, shall we? So, recently, we've been having a bit of a time, haven't we? We've seen Activision doing all kinds of naughty things. Bobby Kotick doing some extremely naughty things. We've seen work abuse from several companies. We've seen NFT, uh, we've seen NFTs try to sneak their way into our games. That filth needs to just go away. Uh, we've seen microtransactions across for years and years and years. We've seen price rises. We've seen unfair work practices. We've seen sexist work practices. You know, we've seen discrimination of all kinds, whether it be ableism, or, you know, racism, sexism. You know, people discriminating against um, gender identity, whether someone who had previously been born one wishes to now be the other. You know. We've seen all these things, and every time, what happens? A certain sector of the community goes, This is highly unacceptable, I'm not going to buy their games. And to be fair, some people who make this decision, they actually, you know, stick to that decision, and they, from that point on, buy no further of those games. But then the company that does this goes, well, plenty other people will make our games. So we're just going to carry on regardless. Thank you very much. And then what really happens, you know, as much as, you know, people who like me, you are, you know, very left leaning, are basically left there going, well, OK, I'm now no longer playing games from this company. So they know that they're not getting my money, you know. I'm not playing games from that developer because they now they know they're not getting my money. Thing is, you and I, we are little tiny minuscule cogs in a massive machine. I mean, I am one bloke. Just one. So if I decide not to do something, you know, like not buy the next Call of Duty, you know, not buy Call of Duty Vanguard because I believe that Activision's policies are just horrible and the way they treat their workers is completely unacceptable then I can do that and I will do that and I I am doing that, you know Activision are not getting any more money out of me, but here's the thing as much as I do that, there needs to be more people. A boycott is only effective when the vast majority of complainants get on the train. You know, if you have a company that regularly sells, let's let's just pick a number out of the air. Let's just call it. Just just have it right. See. Call of Duty Vanguard was projected to sell, let's say, 20 million copies across all platforms, you know, PC, Xbox and PlayStation. 20 million copies across all those platforms. Let's say 1 million, and that's a big number when you consider things, right? 1 million people say, I'm not going to buy that game. 19 million people right? 19 million people will still go yeah, I'm still buying it now even if let's say you know let's say a further 500,000 after the boycott is all said and done and it's been a you know it's been 18 months and it's moved on and it's been forgotten about that the boycott ever existed because nobody remembered anything because memories are short Let's say 500,000 of those original 1 million people, which by the way is never going to happen, 
as much as it would be kind of neat if it did, but it's not going to happen. Let's just be real here. Let's say 500,000 of those people decide to then go and buy the game second hand because a lot of the people who have bought that game will probably trade it in at some point along the way in that preceding 18 months. Now I'm just throwing numbers about, but you know, just, just go with me here. So 500,000 500, people then buy that game or second hand. Now admittedly, Activision doesn't see any money from that sale. However, battle passes, season passes, uh, expansions, you know, weapon skins, character skins, you know, DLC, any form of DLC you want to mention, that's secondary revenue for, for a games company, such as Activision. So even if they don't sell the game, they're still selling you the bits and pieces to make the game more so. And even and once they've got the once you've got the game, then you're continually having the Activision brand name broadcast in your face. You're thinking Activision, Activision, Activision. They're in your head. They're they're living rent free. So the question that has to be asked is. If boycotts are not going to end up being enough, and I'm beginning to think that they're probably not, then what actually can we, as a community, do to try and help right some of the wrongs? You know, how do we get companies, you know, to not behave horribly? Because right now, a company will only not do something if they feel the mass pressure of their wallets. If we affect their wallet, they will act in a manner that we consider them, you know, consider to be better for the community, better for gaming, better for the people who make the games. And that seems at this time to be an awfully big ask. I mean, it was only really that the NFT filth didn't make its way into Ubis into the Ubisoft game that it was touted to come along to be because a large section of the internet went on Twitter, went on Instagram, went on Facebook, went on YouTube and went no. Nah! Which was wonderful to see that people got that motivated and people actually spoke up in such vast numbers that a company, you know, changed its mind. You know, it stopped itself, or at least pretends at least for a wee while, to to pretend to stop doing a thing that would potentially make it a bunch of money. Because that's what it comes down to when you get right down to the dirty, grimy, underneath coating. You know, that sort of layer underneath everything. It's about the money. You know, and in some instances, it has to be about the money because devs have got to get paid, studios have got to be rented, electricity's got to be paid for. You know, cleaning staff need to have contracts. You know, there's a whole economy that springs forth from gaming, as with any other industry, whether you're making cars or or biscuits or you know or calculators. It doesn't matter. You could, be, you could have a factory that makes, you know, um, condoms. Every product, everything that is a tangible product that you and I will buy in a shop or in an online store has staff that made it and has staff that made the things that the people made to use to, to make the things. And there's like canteen staff or people that staff the shops that are near the, near the factories that people use to make their food or buy their clothes to go to the jobs. Everything's tied together. It's all interconnected. It's all a deep web, you know? There's nothing you can really do to separate it all. It's all intrinsically deeply knitted together. So you pick up one bit and the whole thing can fall apart. 
so what can we do? Well, the only thing, as far as I can see, that we can ever possibly do is come to, is really come together as a community and speak loudly and in vast, vast opinion crunching numbers. We have to be there. We have to be vigilant. And to be honest, if that's to happen for every single issue that's wrong, unfortunately, because we're humans, I don't see that happening. Because that stuff takes effort. It takes time. It takes thought. It takes, you know, it just, you know, it's antithetical to what gaming is supposed to be about. Gaming, right? Now I'm pretty sure that all you out there in the Zen fam will agree. What video games are supposed to be first and foremost is fun, entertainment, escapism. Okay? When I'm running around as a cartoon character in a cartoon world, Blasting cartoon guns at cartoon enemies, you know, then I'm not thinking about my taxes. I'm not thinking about the the milk I've got to buy. I'm not thinking about, you know, how my kids doing at school. I'm not thinking about the state of my marriage. I'm not thinking about, you know, the targets I've got to achieve at work. I'm playing. A video game. I have, de I have, t I'm taking place in an act that detaches me for a small amount of time away from the grind of existence. So, if I'm trying to remove myself from the grind of existence, it's pretty safe to say that the last thing that us in that position are thinking about is right. Now to type a strongly worded tweet, or even more so, a strongly worded email. I mean, let's face it, how many people, nobody writes a letter, almost nobody writes a letter these days, writing an email? I mean, there are certain sectors of the public now who go, email? Ah, easy, grandad. <laughs> yeah, you know. A form of communication that's only existed for like, say what, about 25, 30 years? Now, you know, commercially speaking, you know, to the vast populace since the mid-90s, you know, is now seen as easy granddad? Just, just let that sink in, okay? People are more concerned with like, sending a tweet, where you have a limited amount of characters, you know? Is it any wonder that like politicians think they can get away with whatever they want to get away with? Because basically people are tired, you know? Especially in these last couple of years, you know? The amount of things that we as a, as a race have had to deal with, you know? We've had to deal with the, uh, the big thing, obviously, that I'm not going to speak its name because, you know, YouTube will slap me. We have to deal with no money. We have to deal with uh, problems getting stuff in shops because of supply chain issues, which of course partly stems from the big thing. It's like in all the other issues, and then there's all the you know there's all the crazy racists for there and going Roar! you know it's like uh, these people ruin everything. These people want all the benefits, but they also want all the jobs. Hang on, but if they're claiming benefits, they're working, but they can't claim benefits because they're not citizens. But anyway, I'm going on a sidetrack here. The whole problem is, right, unless gigantic numbers of people act together as one voice, then we're not going to change things. Unfortunately, we're not going to change things because people won't do that because humans are inherently lazy. And that's not, I'm saying that we're a bad species. That's just part of our evolution, you know. 
we came up in such a way where like you have to reserve energy because you don't know where your next meal is coming from you know back in our ancient past you know mad had to hunt saber-toothed tiger you know chop off the meat eat that wear the skin make that in the clothing possibly make a shelter try you know try from place to place to place keep trying to find resources keep everybody alive keep yourself alive you know and life was short life was hard you know and th we were like that for so incredibly long you know it was buried deep into our code so by the time that you know the 21st century human pops along we're still largely thinking in those terms you know at a base level we're still kind of like survive 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 no matter what save energy you know we still have that ancient way of thinking because as the st as the state we are in right now it's tiny whilst the state we were in previously went on for ages literally you know we've, we've been in that way for donkeys you know we've been that state for a really stupidly long period of time even if you take it to like the like the dark ages and the middle ages and stuff life was still short and hard you had to fight for survival and you know it only really started to get to the way it kind of is now you know sort of like toward the sort of middle of the 20th century when you get right down to it you know i mean we're talking post-war you know with technology and life expectancy increasing and you know products to buy and homes to live in and expectations and electricity and education and, and medicines and stuff all that is still really 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 modern so it's not a surprise that when humans are met with this idea of like see this thing you're doing for fun stop that for a minute and do something that seriously isn't fun do you see the disconnect do you see why it is that in the long run boycotts you know very rarely work and companies know this and what's more they count on it so we need a new system we need something else we can do other than like occasionally coming together with such numbers that we actually make companies change their mind we need another way forward and that i'm going to leave in your hands I want you to get typing on that keyboard, you know, I want you to go scroll down on your phone to that comment section, I want you to come to me and go, right Zen bloke, this is what we do, this is how we sort it, because you're Zen fam out there, and I know you're smart, you know, or even if you're, you know, or at the very least, you have another way of looking at the problem, maybe I'm missing something, I mean, hey, my brain's not as flexible as some of you young and out there. I mean, I'm 47, you know. It's like, uh, and even though I try not to be a stick in the mud, I'm sure I'm probably missing something. And if I am, please tell me. I'm ready to learn. Ah, okay, guys. Hashtag support Scottish YouTubers. And of course, as always, aye. Nay bother. <laughs>